Welcome to the world of ants. These remarkable insects never cease to surprise us in countless ways. They can be farmers, soldiers, nurses, construction workers, hunters, scouts and cleaners. But can you picture them as weavers? Ecophila genus is divided in two subspecies. Smaragdina and Longinoda. Smaragdina lives in forests of Southeast Asia, India and Australia. Longinoda lives in the trees of Sub-Saharan Africa. They like to settle in any place where trees can grow close to each other and form a canopy. That's why we sometimes find them in urban areas or on farms. The species is arboreal, which means that Ecrophila ants live exclusively in trees where they weave their nests from leaves and silk. Observing workers, you will discover that the ones called green tree ants are not green at all. But that doesn't take into account the queen and her elegant sylvan dress. How do ants create silk? Since the Neolithic and probably a bit before, we humans produce silk out of the larva of an Asian moth the Bombyx mori. In comparison, ants have been weaving silk for millions of years. Like us, they use larvae, but unlike us, they use their own. It always starts with workers exploring the surroundings. Then, they call in reinforcements. Other sisters come to give a hand, bending the leaves and shaping them as the future nest requires. They can stay there as long as requested, waiting for other ants to come to weave. But nobody's coming. For now. Those ants will have to be patient. The workers responsible for weaving are currently busy tending to the main nest. In various ant species, workers play essential roles in protecting the nest, caring for the brood and carrying heavy loads. The workers of the Ecophila species are also fulfilling these tasks, but they also show one distinctive behavior. They carefully grasp larvae between their mandibles and then vibrate their antenna directly onto the larvae's head. This action seems to trigger the silk secretion. They repeat the process as long as they need to. The silk has a double function as nest material and nest protection. Ants can shape and reshape their nest at will. They create rooms and corridors. These ants here are nurses. They care for eggs, larvae and pupae, the three stages of the ant life cycle. While other ants are working, these two ants look like they're having a break. They are not exchanging a kiss. In fact, this worker is helping her sister by sharing her food. Nurses are quite busy in the nest and don't really have a chance to go out to feed. This food sharing is called trophallaxis. So how does that work? The first stomach of an ant, the crop, is meant to be a reservoir for the colony. Food can go backwards to be shared with another ant. This system assures the food distribution in the entire colony and helps the ants who are not able to access nutrients so easily. Like humans, ants are one of the rare species being able to modify their immediate environment. That probably explains why they are so successful. Weaver ants expand their nest across the canopy between several trees. In the event of a tree falling, the colony ensures survival through its multiple queens distributed among the trees. A colony with several queens is called polygynous. Not all Ecophila colonies are polygynous, but there are enough of them to ensure that the species has a chance to survive for another million years. Smaragdina ants have been observed spreading over a hundred silk nests, up to 21 trees, covering no less than 1,500 square meters. Let's go back to our tiny masons. They have transformed the once mere gateways into real bridges. Ecophila ants employ their bodies as living ladders, collectively serving as an efficient traction mechanism. Everybody is pulling their weight and that of their fellow ants. When everything is in the right place, Ecophila ants seal the junction with silk. 
Meanwhile, other workers have to feed the colony. Aquafilla ants are an omnivore species. That means they eat animal proteins as well as sugar-based food. Generally, ants are scavengers. They collect dead insects and parts of larger dead animals. Here, these ants follow the pheromone track, which leads them to a dead cricket. When enough workers are gathered, their work can begin. They have to push, lift and carry the huge insects. These ants can carry up to 60 times their own weight. Their anatomy allows them to lift even heavier loads, but not over long distances. It's the reason why working together is mandatory. Workers are also opportunistic. They never miss an occasion to forage for fresher meat. This one here was not fast enough. The ants have immobilized it with a very efficient method. They wait for the trap fly to become exhausted. This poor worm would probably be served at the larvae dinner. Just as they did with the cricket, they collaborate to transport the food back to their nest. Along the way, their path intersects with our earlier hunters who had successfully captured the fly. Let's come back to our new nest. Everything is ready and now it's time to bring our queen in. The queen is four times bigger than the workers. She needs help to move to the new location. They need 15 to 20 workers in order to move the queen. In addition to helping her move, they also function as her bodyguards. Some scouts are patrolling around to open the path. They are also making sure that there are no threats around. With the queen secured in the nest, life can go back to normal. Nothing is forever, even for ants. Following the death of a queen and her last workers, we can still observe how durable the silk material is. A shell of its former self, but a strong one. Even though the leaves are dead, the silk will link them for a very long time. With all of that in mind, we think it's fair to say that the Cofilla ants are capable of creating some of the most impressive architectural structures. <laughs>